Studying the great book Popol Vuh, that is the sacred book of the Mayas, is mentioned that the myth was created by three things. The first was the mud, second was the wood, and third was the maize. So many cultures had different mythological beliefs about the creation of the, the world and the creation of men, right? Actually, in Christianity also, well, they have their own conception about this, right? But uh, Mayans are the people of the maize. So, you know, some people say, oh, you know, Mayas are, you know, made by maize, huh? You know, with corn cobs and the whole deal. If you apply that to now, you are what you eat, guys. The Mayans believed that they had to travel through the underworld and passing through nine levels. There was nine levels down and 13 levels up. I showed you the underworld pyramid and the heaven pyramid. Well, going down, like Pakal, in his great sarcophagus is showing himself defeating the underworld and getting purified like the maze. You can see Pakal's position here. He's in the middle, falling into the underworld. This is the mouth of the underworld, and this is the god of the underworld. There are the two eyes, the nose, and the teeth. So Pakal enters the underworld, or enter the Shibalba, that is the underworld, the name of the underworld in Maya, and he has to fight against the underworld in order to get purified like the maze does in nine days of germination. So the underworld stages were related with the days that the maize germinates. If the seed germinated, it's because the, the corn seed won the underworld, and you have the plant growing. So this is the same, the same idea that the Mayans had for creation. So there was five houses of torture. It was a place of torture. It was not a good place to go. But everybody had to pass through the underworld and you have to fight against the nine lords of the night or the nine of the gods. Many kings were buried with weapons. Many kings were buried with lots of jade because with jade they will pay their way through the underworld. See? And many kings were buried with warriors and with food like the Egyptians and the Greeks and many other cultures. Uh, paid to the underworld or to the next life, the same with the lines. In this case, we have this important mythology. These people there in front represent noble captives from the cities that they defeated, but they also show the nine lords of the night. Five on the right, and four on the left. Wherever you see the number nine, it makes reference to the nine cities. And the 13 up, 13 moves. 13, 13 times 20 is one calendar, 260 days, based on the gestation of the woman, when the woman is pregnant. They use that calendar. That's the religious calendar. The astronomical calendar is 18 months, also times 20. The Mayans had the 20 number system count. The Spanish brought the decimal. The Mayans did not know the decimal. They counted by 20. So all their numeration is based on 20. So basically here we have 18 months times 20 equals 360. But we're missing five days. Those are the unlucky days we call the antagonistic days. That's the month of Wayeb, the, the last month of the year. So we're not including it here we will include it in the in the month glyph but not in the day glyphs you knew that the wayeb was the 20th of february to the 25th <laughs> the five days of bad luck uh yes five to tenth uh here these both calendars conjunct every 52 years. Why do they conjunct every 52 years? Because the Mayas did not have leap years like we do. They readjust their calendars every 52 years. The Mayas were very smart. According to our calendar, in the year 3,100 and 
13, it's their year zero. And their end will be in the year 2012. 2012. Putting it in years, okay, according to our calendar. That was their year zero, and that was their end. Okay, but the Mayans did not believe in before Christ or after Christ. So they track time by day cycles since their year zero. Okay, for example, uh, a one day, they call it a king. A 20 day cycle, they call it a winal. Okay, a 360 day cycle, they call it a tun. A 7,200 day cycle, they call it a katun. And 144,000 days, they call it a baktun. 20 kings is one winal. 18 winales is one tun. 20 tuns is one katun. And 20 katuns is one baktun. Okay? So when we find a text in a hieroglyphic panel, where, we, where there's a date, okay? We find glyphs that represent day cycles. Like for example, let me give you a, a better example. If we find a bar, a bar, this is a bar, bar is five, dots are one. If we put four dots in one bar, that is the number nine, nine. And if we put the numbers followed with an emblem glyph that represents a cycle, that is a head, okay? This is the symbol of a baktun. Okay? Right here. So we say nine baktuns. Nine baktuns. How much is a baktun? 144,000 days. This is also another example. Okay, nine baktuns, eight katuns, nine winales, uh, baktuns, katuns, uh, tuns, winales, and king. Depending on the position. Okay, so here we have nine baktuns. How much is nine? We multiply nine times 144,000 days. And then eight times 7,200 days. Then nine times 360. And 13 times 20. And we don't have one day here. So it's nine baktuns, eight katuns, nine tuns, 13 winales, and zero kings. What is the mystery about this? The great knowledge on that the side. The only man-made building over there is the bathrooms. Okay? Uh, you can go down through here. Yeah. Go down and around. You can't miss it on that side. Okay? This is the date of Pakal's birth. Uh. These are the days that have passed from their year zero. That is 1,357,100 days <laughs> from their year zero to the birth of Pakal. Okay? Do we get along here? Because this is a very interesting to, to see because then we calculate. We reduce it from a, a complete cycle that the Mayans believe that existed. So for example here, it's 3,114 or 3,113 to be exact. How many days it passed from this date to the birth of Pakal? 1,357,100 days. That is really the, the, the day cycles, right? So what we do is that reduce it from 1,872,000 days. Why? Because 1,872,000 days is 13 baktuns. The minds did not believe in 14 baktuns or 15 baktuns. Well, there was this amount of number, but their prophecy, remember, only had 13 baktuns. And 13 baktuns is 1,872,000 days. For us in years is 2012. Since this beginning, since this beginning to this is 13 baktuns. 
or 1,872,000 days, or for us, 5,126 years. The Mayans knew that every 13 Bakhtuns, there was an astronomical event. And that is why they mentioned that it's going to be the end of the fifth sun or the fifth era, when the 13 Bakhtun conclude. This is based on an astronomical knowledge, right? Many people think that it's going to be the end of the world in this date, 2012 or 13 Bakhtuns. When the 13 Bakhtun cycle end, that is going to be the end of the world. People say that. But in the Mayan prophecy, you will, you will read that the sun with Orion will be in a very special position and in the horizon Venus will fall. The Mayans believe that it's going to be the death of Venus. That is why it's the end of the 13 Bakhtun. That is going to be the end of the fifth era because this astronomical event is going to cause a change in the planet. Because that same day when the 13 Bakhtun conclude, the 52 year cycle also land. The same day the calendars conjunct like this, look. You see this? This is the two calendars conjuncting every 52 years since 3114 BC. And it keeps conjuncting every 52 years and it's going to be conjuncting again. The last conjunction of the 13 Bakhtun will be the 21st of December in the shortest day of the year in the winter solstice. 21st of December. All these cities, all these ceremonial cities that day is going to be full of people. See, receiving the energy of the sun that day, see, and expecting something important, uh, uh, hopefully not negative, right? So the calendars don't conjunct because there's an, an astronomical event. See, that's just to readjust their calendars, right? But they, they showed it as something important, right? In Yucatan, every 52 years, they constructed on top of another building. See, what is really important, and this is something that we must think, is what is happening, see, in the, in the, in the, in the galaxy, in the cosmos, uh, right? Something more beyond, right? The spots in the sun that have a, a change in our magnetic north, See, and studying the magnetic north, how it was in the Mayan times and how it is now. See, with how, uh, how it was a thousand, two thousand, five thousand years ago in their year zero, we can know where north was exactly with... with so th there has been changes. The magnetic north is not in the same place anymore. So that also causes changes in us and in the, in the animal life. Maybe in this 2012 for us, or 13 Bakhtuns for the minds, we must readjust our life to something new, to a change, to something, right? Uh, Venus will fall. For us, we know that it's in the end of its journey. Venus is in its end of the journey, but the Mayans thought that it was the death of Venus. So by the positions that these planets and the constellations will be, see, there, there will be an alignment, and this is already, you know, studied by astronomers. So now you see in Discovery Channel, of course, Discovery Channel exaggerates a little bit, a lot, right, I can say, but, well, it's good because... It gives you the knowledge of what it, it really is, but but I mean, to say that it's going to be the end of the world, it's, you know, so let's think, what did the minds think about this? They did mention that there was going to be a change, see, that there is going to be an, an ecological, you know, problem, but they did not mention that it's going to be the end of the world, right? So. 13 Bakhtuns, the sacred number, number 13, it's 13 months 
of the calendar. Also, it represented the 13 baktuns. See? The turtle had 13 squares on its shell. All turtles have 13 squares on its shell. That's why the turtle was a sacred animal for the Mayans. Right? So here, for example, okay, it's quite simple. Okay? Pakal, Pakal's birth. 1,357,100 days minus 1,872,000 days is 514,900 days. That we divided in 365.25 and we will know how many years ago Pakal was born. See? And taking away from 2012, we will also know the exact year when Pakal was born. That is the year 603 AD. Finding these glyphs in the text, we start counting the day cycles. And then add them from 3,114. We add them, right? And then reduce them from 13 baktuns, right? In the calendar, you see, for example, zodiacs. In the Mayan life, zodiacs were very important. For example, uh, you want to know your special divine meaning? You want to know? First, we start with you. What month and day? July 1. July 1? Uh, you are in the month of Kayab. You are the same as the music. See, these are the zodiacs. Okay, uh, this had a lot of importance in the Mayan times. 